This knife has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. And maybe in our world here, there lives a happy little mill. Hey guys! Hey guys, this is Eric. Today I want to talk to you a little bit more about traveling with type 1 diabetes, but specifically getting through airport security and flying with type 1 diabetes because it can kind of be a hassle, um, especially if you got things hanging off of you like pumps or sensors or pods. Um, and we actually just got through airport security. As you can see, it's Christmas, so let's dive into it. Now, of course, there's some things you want to do ahead of time before you leave. And, of course, packing supplies is one of those things. You want to make sure to bring extra. Maybe not double, but at least bring a few extra days worth of supplies. Now, me, I, I use Omnipods. One of these lasts three days. So, on a trip for five days, I'm typically bringing in about five pods. So, I've got one a day just in case. But I've also got syringes for a backup. But... To okay. make everything okay. concise, to get it all packed down together, packing cubes are awesome. As you can see right here, I've got all my goods, my Omnipod, sensor, everything's in this one little bag. It's nice and neat. You can just throw it in your suitcase. You don't have to worry about anything flying all around. So these are great for carrying supplies and not worrying about anything shuffling. Another thing you want to do before you leave is call your doctor, call your endo, and have them email you a list of all your prescriptions. You want to print those out and bring them with you. So just in case the airport security pulls this bag out and they're like, oh man, what are these needles doing in your backpack? Now you have proof that you need them. So I always carry a list of my prescriptions. So this right here is everything that I need and will have in my bag at all times. So that way I can be like, look, I've got syringes right here. I need them and a doctor says so. So they can't question anything. So print these out, carry them with you anytime you're traveling, flying, whatever. Keep them with you anytime you're traveling. I've never had a problem and I've never had to prove my diabetes um, from a doctor's standpoint. I've never had to use my prescription list, but it's good to have just in case so that way you're not getting in any political conundrums or delays or anything like that. So always carry your prescription list with you. So with traveling, with walking around, possibly running to your gate, depending on if you're on time or not, I know that Emily and I, we have run to many a gates in our days. And that can cause some lows, especially with a little bit of added stress on top of trying to move quickly. So you definitely want to carry some low snacks. And if you're someone who likes to bring juice um, or some sort of liquid, uh, you're going to want to switch your snacks up. I like raisins. This is always my go-to because they can pack easy. You only need a little bit of them to really bust your blood sugar up. So these are always my go-to and I've never had trouble getting these through airport security. I use them all the time. Of course you want to bring your, glu your glucometer with you. Make sure that it is in your carry-on. It's with your person at all times. But that's nothing new. Um, you just don't want it to get checked and you can't get it on a plane. So always make sure that it's in your carry-on. That's like num rule number one, have your glucometer with you at all times. Now getting through airport security, this can be a little tricky, especially if you're someone that's got a lot of things hanging off you, like sensors or pods or pumps. This can set off some red flags and some alarms. And what I found is it's best to keep them somewhere that you can get to them easily. One time I had an Omnipod on my thigh and I couldn't just show the guy when the alarm went off what it was. So we had to go in a back room, I had to show him, it was you know, awkward, there was a little bit of a delay. So what I do, I'll show you guys, keep everything just right here. I got sensor here, pod there, so that way when you start beeping and the alarms are going off and going crazy, you can just kind of lift your shirt up a little bit and they might ask you to touch your pod or your sensor or your pump and then they'll swab your hand 
but it's a lot easier than having to pull your pants down like I did. That was really awkward. Um, so having everything where you can see it makes it nice and easy and gets you through airport security quickly. Now the easiest way to get through security is to do TSA pre-check. And Emily and I did that for the first time today. And it was so nice. I, I, every time I go through security, I always hesitate. And I'm like, okay, where's the beep? Are they, are they going to start questioning me? And that didn't happen because I didn't have to go through the body scanner. That's typically, um, you go through just the x-ray and not the body scanner. So TSA pre-check definitely is awesome. Definitely gets you through quickly. And if you're looking to save some headache, you know, it might be worth spending a little extra bucks just to make it easier. So if you guys are flying into a different time zone than what you're leaving from, when you land, you gotta manually change your time settings. Things like pumps, sensors, pods, especially with your basal rates, that could really mess things up. So when you land, make sure you're changing your time and get things right so you're getting your doses at the right time and nothing's getting screwed up. Happy Christmas, Kwanzaa! Yeah. Hey, what's you guys? 27 years you guys a straight or a girl? It's very easy. Hello, hello. Hello. Thank you, Merry Christmas. Getting Eric. <laughs> <laughs>